Hi everyone, my name is Tim Bodman, I'm the pastor at Camborne Community Church and because we're in the middle of um, lockdown with COVID-19, we're doing things a little bit different um, for our Sunday services. So today I'm bringing you the message which was pre-recorded a couple of days ago, um, but it's still God's word and let's pray that, uh, that we preach and proclaim God's word um, here and now. So whilst we're on lockdown, um, we're looking at the events that followed on after Resurrection Day, um, after that awesome event, that magnificent, magnificent event where God demonstrated his power in raising Jesus from among the dead. So on Easter Day, two weeks ago, um, we looked at the women at the empty tomb. And you remember that, uh, that message, that comment that came from the angels, why do you seek the living one among the dead? And obviously there's a challenge for us today as well with that. And then last week, um, we looked at an event that also happened on Resurrection Day. Um, the account of the two who traveled um, from Jerusalem back to Emmaus, probably the, town, the little village where they, where they lived, and how after Jesus appeared to them, when he broke the bread in front of them, after Jesus appeared to them, they remembered how their hearts burned within them um, whilst he talked to them on the way. Now today, we're still, um, well, the, the, the start of our reading is still on Resurrection Day in the evening of that day, because we're going to look at the event um, of uh, surrounding Thomas. And what we often call, who we often call Doubting Thomas, but we'll look at that in just a moment. Let's first of all read God's Word. So we're in John's Gospel, chapter 20, and we're going to read from verse 19 down to verse 29. So John's Gospel, chapter 20, and from verse 19, this is what God's Word says. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put, your hand, put out your hand and place it in my sight. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you. Um, even as we read these words, we know that we are reading life and truth. And we pray as we spend these few moments together, would you help us to understand what this means for us today? So Holy Spirit, illuminate these, this, these verses, we pray, and glorify Jesus in his precious name. Amen. So the man that we're looking at today is um, Thomas. And as I said a little bit earlier, he's often called Doubting Thomas, which I think is a little bit unfair. I think he gets a hard time um, because of his doubts. Yes, he failed. That's, that's a reality. We can't get away from that. He doubted the report that the disciples brought to him. They told him, even though they'd already heard other reports that day, they told him, Jesus is alive. We've seen him. And he doubts that report. So I'm not calling this sermon today 
doubting Thomas, I'm calling it worshipping Thomas. Um, and that's an adjective, by the way, a word to describe Thomas. I'm not suggesting for one moment that we should worship Thomas. No, that, of course, would be wrong. Um, because what I want us to grasp this, uh, in, in this, these few minutes together is that although Thomas failed by doubting, he learned from his mistake. And he learned from this moment of experiencing the grace of the Lord Jesus when he appears to them the second time. So let's, uh, let's look at this, uh, this passage then. The passage starts, as we've commented, on Resurrection Day. It's in the evening, on the evening of that day in verse 19 where we started. What day? Well, that day when Mary had come to them with that report, I have seen the Lord. That was the day, a day of triumph, a day of majesty, a, de a day of great victory. And yet all of the disciples were guilty of disbelief. This was still Resurrection Day. And on the evening of that day, ten of the disciples were there together. Judas, of course, was no longer with them. And Thomas, on this particular occasion, wasn't there as well. And the, the ten disciples were there together, locked in a room in Jerusalem. They were scared of the Jews and what might happen to them. The news that Jesus' body was missing and was no longer in the tomb where it had been sealed would have spread through the city like wildfire. And being the very close followers of this rabbi called Jesus. And they were known to be the close followers of Jesus. And because of that, their lives may well have been in danger. They would have been prime targets, if you like, for violence towards them. The Jews were in hatred of this Jesus. They had concocted this story with Pilate and the guards. That, um, that, 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 that let's say that someone that, 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 that put the guards there to, so that um, so we don't have this problem of because he told us he was going to rise again. Matthew's gospel tells us this. And so there was fear with the disciples and they barricade themselves in this room. The scripture is very clear. It's not just that the doors were shut. The doors were locked, secure. And Jesus, in the midst of this, Jesus suddenly appears to them. So consider, first of all, all the heightened emotions and the, of the state that they were in. Jesus having been taken by wicked hands and killed. Now we know, because we've read to the end of the book, we know that there was a reason and a purpose for the death of Jesus, and it was essential. I could not stand here today and preach if it were not for the fact of the death of Jesus. Because the death of Jesus took all my sins away, took all the things that I've done wrong, has taken it away, has removed it. But for the disciples, they hadn't lived to the end of the story, as it were. And so they had lived through tragic events that weekend. And then to confound it all, even though Jesus had told them he was going to rise again, this thing happened and they couldn't get their heads around it. And there they were, as I've mentioned already, locked in the room because they were afraid of the Jews, afraid that they might come and cause violence to them. And suddenly, their master Jesus, whom they had walked with for three years, had followed, had learned from him for three years, suddenly, he's standing there right in front of them. They must have gone from fear to terror very quickly. But then Jesus brings in his peace to calm the situation. It's the first thing he says to them, isn't it? Now, I'm not going to go over the detail from verse, the end of verse 19, 20 um, through to, to 23. I'm not going to go into the detail of what Jesus says. That's for another sermon on another day, um, because that's not what we're focusing on. It's not our focus um, here at this time. So I want to jump straight to verse 24, where it brings in the narrative. John, the, 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 as writing this gospel, gives us some of the narrative of what happened. Thomas one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples told him about it, he didn't believe them. Hence his name is Doubting Thomas. The trouble is, this wasn't just a, yeah, right, pull the other one. 
The trouble with this, and, 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 and Thomas is very clear as you, as you read, down this, uh, read down this section, he is, he is very clear and he's adamant about his disbelief. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, unless I place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's the position that Thomas took. He needed hard evidence. He needed facts. Hearsay was not good enough for him. He needed to see it for himself. So the name Doubting Thomas is justified. But let's carry on the story. Verse 26, eight days later. The appearance that he had missed and disbelieved was on Resurrection Sunday in the evening. So a week on Monday later, they were all together again. This time, Thomas was with them. And again, the doors were locked through fear of the Jews. But Jesus miraculously appeared to them again. And again, what does Jesus say? He says, peace be with you. And then he immediately addresses, in in the previous occasion, in the earlier verses, Jesus had had taught the disciples. He'd given them instruction. But here, uh, when he reveals himself to them again, having said, peace be with you, because they must have been scared, He immediately addresses Thomas and answers the very specific conditions that he had placed the week before on his belief. Jesus says, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Then he rebukes Thomas. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Most of us facing that situation would be embarrassed. Maybe we'd try and skulk away into a corner and not be seen. But not Thomas. Having had this very public rebuke from Jesus in front of all his friends, he exclaims, I believe in worship, my Lord and my God. This is why I've called him for this this talk today. This is why I've called him worshipping Thomas rather than doubting Thomas. Now, Jesus then goes on to say and effectively speak about you and me. Um, Because in those closing verses, in verse 29, Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? And then he adds, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I've been believing in Jesus and following Jesus for 30 odd years, 35 years now, but I've never seen him. And Jesus says that I am blessed. And if you have believed in Jesus and you're following him and you've believed the accounts written in Holy Scripture, then Jesus says you are blessed. Now that's the story, that's the narrative of what happened a week on Monday after Resurrection Day. But what do we learn from it for ourselves for today? Maybe you're listening to this, um, this video and watching and you're not yet a Christian and you've listened to everything that's been said and you've heard things about the Christian message before and you've read things, but you've got questions in your mind and doubts. You may be thinking, how can this really be? How can a man be raised from the dead and appear suddenly behind locked doors to his followers. I appeal to you, don't just walk away. Stick with it. Keep reading God's word. And Jesus will reveal himself to you as the one who loved you so much that he was prepared to die for you. So that you can know and experience peace with God. So that you can know and experience All your wrongdoings and the guilt from the things that you've done wrong can be completely removed before a holy, righteous God. And you can know and experience his love for you personally. And if that's you, we'd love to connect with you. There are different ways, of course, that you connect can connect through our Facebook and, and, and website. But do get in touch because we would love to speak with you, to pray with you, and to talk more about these things. But I appeal to you, don't give up in your search. And the questions that you have, write them down and ask God to reveal himself to you. 
But maybe you're watching this today and you're a Christian and maybe you've been a Christian for many years. Doubt is something that affects so many people to a greater or lesser de degree. Many great Christian leaders have struggled with doubt. We understand that Martin Luther and John Calvin, Charles Spurgeon, the great Victorian preacher, struggled with doubt. Many others. But, like Thomas, they have not stayed in that place. They've reached a place of worship where they can exclaim, like Thomas in our scripture today, my Lord and my God. I've been there. I remember a time, I've shared this with some of you before, I remember a time in the very early years of our marriage, before the children came along even, when suddenly I, I, I said to, to my wife, Jackie, I said, what if it's not true? What if all of this that we believe is, is not real? And it was a real, a very real crisis of faith that I had. And we worked through it and we talked. And, and there are times when, when, when it, the, 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 the doubt just floods over me. And I have to come back and read God's word and, and remember the experiences that I've, that I've had with God, with Jesus by my side. And I know that the doubts are false and I know that God is real. But maybe that's where you are today. Maybe you're questioning, where is God in all this coronavirus? Maybe you're, 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 you're concerned where is God in the, in the whole financial situation of my family now that I'm not working? And whatever, whatever your personal situation may be, you maybe have doubts and you're thinking, where is God in all of this? So what did Thomas do? Actually, if we read the whole of this section that we've looked at today from verse 19 to verse 29, what the account shows us is that Thomas stayed with the disciples. He didn't go off on his own and, and be independent. Yes, he missed the first event on Resurrection Day. And even though he disbelieved the report that they brought to him, he didn't go off on his own. He didn't jack it all in, to use the expression. He didn't say, well, I'm off now. <clears throat> Next week, we shall look at Peter, who, who did effectively say that. He said, I'm going off fishing. But Thomas didn't. He stuck with the other disciples. Maybe he still hadn't got the answers. Maybe he still didn't understand everything. But he stuck with them. And so it is for us today. We may have doubts. We may have unanswered questions. But I urge you today to keep walking with your Christian brothers and sisters. Just like Thomas did in the verses that we've read. And because he stayed with them, because he, he stuck with it, he got to see the Lord. Yes, he had to wait another eight days from the first time that the, the other disciples had seen Jesus. But he got to see Jesus himself and proclaim his worship for the risen Savior and Lord Jesus. There's a well-known secular phrase, isn't there? There's, there's safety in numbers. And I think we can apply this to, to, to what Thomas was doing. Yes, he had doubts. Yes, he had concerns. But he stuck with the other disciples. And so I would say to you today, if you have doubts, if you have concerns, keep with your church. I know it sounds ironic me saying in the middle of social distancing and isolation that we're to keep with your church. But actually, we've, we've proved what we can do digitally and the way that we can connect digitally through WhatsApp and Facebook and text, and even have church services using Zoom. And been dozens of phone calls in our church alone, just keeping contact with all the different people of the church, keeping us all connected and together. And I know, and others have commented, I know that we've had some precious times in our Sunday services via Zoom, and especially in our daily prayer meetings on Zoom. And so... We need to do, when those doubts come, we need to do what Thomas did and keep with the other disciples. Keep talking to them. As I close, my prayer for everyone watching is, is that even though doubts may come, work through it with the Lord Jesus. Work through it with his word. Have your Bible there. Write down the questions 
and the concerns that you have. And as you read and spend time with Jesus, he will reveal himself to you. Spend time with your Christian family, albeit um, via technology and so on. And you will come through and reach that place of worship where you can exclaim, like Thomas did, my Lord and my God. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for these stories that the Bible recall for us of the reality of the humanity of the people involved in these stories. Thomas's doubt and concern was real. But yet as he stuck with his friends, with his church family, to use the analogy, he got to see you, Jesus, in all your glory. And he could proclaim, my Lord and my God. My prayer as we close now is that you would help each one listening and watching. That as the doubts come, we may bring them to you, Jesus. And we may work through them and come and to reach that point where we just bow down in worship to you, proclaiming that you are the one true God. So help each one of us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.